what's up guys and gals? Sanitary103, thanks for watching another video. So in today's exciting topic, okay, I'll uh, retract that back a little bit. It may not be the most exciting topic, but if you just have a few minutes to spare, that'd be great because it's a very beneficial and important topic. And that topic is the thermic effect of food, AKA TEF. Now I'm not gonna try to go college professor mode and bore you to death, so just bear with me. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. But the thermic effect of food, AKA TEF, is basically the amount of energy it requires to digest and absorb uh, food. So a lot of people, when they think of using up energy, they think about the everyday things in life, walking, you know, go, going outside to check the mail, exercising, uh, sleeping, and stuff like that. But there is such a thing about this uh, TEF that your body does require energy to break down uh, carbs, proteins, and fats. So there are basically three main sources in which a person burns calories every day. The majority of it comes from your basal metabolic rate. That's just the amount of calories you, you need to sustain to live. That's about 70 to 75%. And then you have about 15 to 20%, which comprises uh, physical exercise uh, and uh, activity. And then the 10% is the TEF, the thermic effect of food. So with respects to the carbs, fats, and proteins, those are your three main macros. With fats and uh, carbohydrates, the body basically requires anywhere between 5 to about 15% of the energy consumed for that particular macronutrient. However, for protein, this thing bumps up to 20% up to even 35% of the energy consumed for a, a protein-based meal. So to put this into perspective, uh, let's take for example a person that's on a 2,000 calorie diet. Now this is just for argument's sake to basically show you guys the differences between this th thermic effect of food. Uh, because, you know, obviously when you eat, you're going to have a combination of proteins, carbs, and fats. But just for the sake of discussion, let's say person A is on a 2,000 calorie diet, strictly carbohydrates. And you got person B who also uh, takes in 2,000 calories, but strictly protein. Now, I don't recommend either one of these, like I mentioned, but this is just for the sake of example. Now, person A, the 2,000 calorie diet, the amount of energy that would require to break down those carbohydrates from those 2,000 calories, let's use the example of about 10%. Person A on a 2,000 calorie uh, rich carbohydrate diet at 10%, the amount of energy required to break that down would be 200 calories. Now, person B, on the other hand, on the 2,000 calorie diet of strictly protein, because it requires more energy to break down that protein, it's going to be bumped up to, let's say, 20%, so 400 calories. So you got person A burning 200 calories, breaking down all those carbohydrates. You got person B eating the same amount of calories and burning double the amount at 400 calories. So based on that example, it clearly shows that when you eat foods that are protein-rich based, you're going to actually burn more calories while you break down that food, which is a good thing. And for this reason alone, this is one of the reasons why, um, for instance, if you've been following my channel uh, for some time, or even if you happen to stumble upon this video, that I always endorse uh, a pretty uh, decent um, high protein uh, diet. Having good high quality protein in your diet does a number of things. Not only does it help you uh, increase your uh, TEF, your thermic effect of food, like I just mentioned, but it also keeps you better satiated for a longer period of time. Um, it gives you that you know sense of fullness. The other cool thing is that if you eat something that's really carbohydrate dense and that really increases your insulin, which promotes fat storage, combining some lean protein with those carbohydrates, it's gonna actually slow down your insulin. It's gonna keep it a little bit more level and you're not gonna you know become a fat storing machine. Instead, you're gonna be becoming an efficient fat burning machine. So another question you guys might be uh, asking and I'm gonna answer is how much protein do you really need? I'm not gonna go into too many specifics because everybody's a little bit different based on your activity level, your gender, your height, and your weight. But a good starting point is between a 0.75 and one gram of your body weight. And that's in pounds and not kilograms. That's a really, really good starting point. Uh, some people, like if you go two times your body weight, I think that's really, really excessive. A lot of that stuff you're just gonna excrete and just poo out. So a one and a half is really pushing it. One gram per body weight if you're on a good weightlifting program should be sufficient, but also make sure you get a good combination of proteins, carbs, and fats. Don't do that all protein 2,000 calorie diet like I just mentioned. That was just an example. Don't do all 
carbohydrate diet either. You want to get a good balance of the three and you're going to have the best of, of both worlds. Thanks once again for watching this video. Comments or questions are always welcome. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for all the latest in diet, health, and fitness. If not already, I put out at least two to three new videos per week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.